Hello and welcome to episode 9. Uh, queuing it up, ready for the big episode 1 0, double mm. figures. Mm. Um, Flying. We, I'm going to put the pressure on Baz for the 10, um, and we're going to have a jingle. We've um, got a jingle. We've got a jingle. Nah, we haven't. Well, it's on. <laughs> it's in production. I'll try my so, best. So this is episode nine with no jingle, but next week you have Baz's word for it, mm. there'll be a jingle. It might I, not be a very good one, it might not be the one we keep for the rest of the show, but we're going to have a jingle, so it'll be um, there for all of you to critique. Mm. Um, we've had a little bit of a gap, so three weeks, various reasons, mm. certainly valid, but we're back at it and hopefully every week we'll be doing these podcasts. So last week or the one that you last listened to, episode eight, was you need three months pay slips um, before you can get a mortgage. We busted that myth wide open. It was an easy one to bust, but it's one of the most asked questions um, on Google, and that's why we did it. Yeah, I was surprised at how a bank would lend you that sum of money without having to have such a, like extensive history in effect. But um, but then when we got into it, there was the whole, all the other risks that come into it. There could be a you know, a lot more chance of them not getting the money back than someone who's not been in a job for that long, you know. Yeah, and like I said, the some of the lenders I, I've had one this week to to source like this. Some of the lenders will want that history. Um, some that won't will be tighter in other areas. Mm. So it is all like if you put them across a level playing field, they all have an overall risk attitude. Um, if we had a point scoring system. Some are more lenient on areas than others, but mm. that allows them to be stricter that, that, that mm. the banks it's would It's beneficial say. to us though, isn't it? That there will be someone out there hopefully that... Yeah. Um, before we start as well, I've got bad hair fever so I might be coughing and barking. I'll try my best to keep it to a minimum. We're going to make um, this one nice and short. It's a good subject. Yeah. We could talk forever on it but I think it's a good one to get back in it. Um, or before we start as well, I had a conversation. I was at a family funeral and I'd seen my cousin that I hadn't seen for 20 odd years. And my sister and we were talking and I was saying to them how funny it was we've been talking on the podcast about um bank accounts and putting silly payments yeah payment things on. Um and how could that affect you and things like that. And I thought it was funny. Went to pay the bill because I was paying for it more, just gonna they were all just gonna send me the money. Came back to them laughing. Um <laughs> let's just say I've had a I've had a very spurious <laughs> a spurious um, payment gone into my thing today for basically it's massive and that, I, I don't want to say what the other word was <laughs> but um, that was my cousin and my sister and so I'm coming I said literally the same thing to them I said I'm, I'm going to be remortgaging soon and the, the look at my thing luckily I haven't got any now I have so <laughs> so while you're remortgaging for me Paddy you'll have to discount that one we'll send the podcast in and, 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 <laughs> as, uh, as evidence <laughs> um, no that that is cool so um what we're looking at here is today's myth, um, which is mortgages are complicated, they're complex, and they're full of small print. Mm-hmm. Um, I picked this one ahead. We, this one was organized. We, we, I'd written the points out before Baz had got here. The day but they before. are complicated. Um, before we start, they are going to be complicated. There's no getting away from the fact that they're complicated. They're not. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust that myth um, because... But it's one, complicated if, if you do it yourself and you, you find that type of thing complicated. Everyone could do it. If, if yeah, but the, the, the answer to the myth <clears throat> and the way to bust it is if you use us, they won't be. Right, yeah. Um, because a mortgage advisor, when I say us, a mortgage advisor, that's their job. Yeah, it would be complicated, but we've got to make sure that it's not hmm. and that you understand it. Um, so I've got plenty of ways to, to do that, how we do it at PGS. Um and it goes back to technology. It goes back to being modern, because if if I was if I stayed old school, then of course if I just slapped you with a two hundred page document on the terms and conditions of the mortgage, then that would that would break you. Mm. It would break anybody. If I sat you with the three hundred payments of the twenty five year fixed rate mortgage. Um, you would struggle mm. to break that down and understand it. Um, and that, that's a, that's our job, to make it sure. So you should never end the process where you think, Jesus, that was complicated. Right. Well, yes, it was complex, but it's not complicated because we've explained it and you will now understand it. Um, the small print, it's there, but the myth of 
I don't want a mortgage or I'm going to get a mortgage, but I'm just going to care about how much we pay and mm. what we're doing, i.e. buying the house, um, then you should understand the inner workings of your mortgage. It's crazy how many people don't. Um, and we love it. And it's a good indicator to us the first couple of questions they ask after mm. we send the research. So some will ask something that is has been demonstrated to them very clearly, but not explained. Right. So we've yeah, totally pointed and highlighted yeah. in the document. Mm. And a common factor with that is, and I'm going to leave this open to you to kind of to do what we do because it'll be better you putting questions mm. and scenarios to me. But one of the main pointers is we send over a mortgage. Here's your mortgage. This is what it looks like. Two year fixed rate with whoever. Mm -hmm. 500 quid a month customer then looks into it and says oh wow that that's good but on the 25th month i don't want to pay that payment mm -hmm. and what what they've overlooked is what we should have explained is that at that point six months before we'll have another chat and we'll remortgage mm -hmm. that opens up a whole new bank of questions what is remortgaging mm -hmm. yeah, why do i yeah. remortgage remortgage is bad <clears throat> is it good um but actually that's our job so we have a document prepared to put that back at them mm -hmm. what we don't do is give them every document we've prepared because every customer is different so when they come back we'll give them that kind of help sheet to say what happens when it comes to the end of my fixed rate period right and then they can read that in very simple you look surprised you wrote you I, mean, I, did, yeah. <laughs> you did, I wrote it you to it. be fair like the amount of different documents that we've got a lot of them internal for you there's a lot i see this is what i mean about it can't be not got uncomplicated whatever you would say it can't be uncomplicated because i see all of the different sort of sections of every part of this mm -hmm. so to me it still is complicated but like see your that's for you that's and you've also internal stuff you've you. also rehashed the reviews and put them into a, mm. a better format have you ever seen a review that said by that was complicated mm. no no well, very, that's, that's very the complex. beauty that's that's the premise of all of them really isn't it mm. We've done, stress we've out done our job if we've taken it mm. out. I mean, I have plenty complicated scenarios. Mm. That's that's a given. And a complicated legal process or even just a complicated chain. Mm. We can't control those. They're out of our hands. But no, I think we pride ourselves. Mm. But come on, who, who, sh who, no mortgage advisor at the end should have a customer saying that was, that was far too complicated. No. Because they haven't done the job. Well, no, no service should really should i mean you no. come to me with a stupid voice note and next thing i'll make something nice for you yeah be creative come read okay um, today today uh, barry we we're doing some work today um <clears throat> and barry went against what he just said hmm. so mm -hmm. he i had a problem he jumped into the app and he fixed the problem then proceeded to explain what he'd done and why and i fell asleep she's not interested I fell asleep. I was yeah, like, well, I don't need to do a podcast on it. You're explaining, yeah. <laughs> you're explaining yeah. something, Baz. That doesn't, I don't care. You're wasting my time. <laughs> the so car, base, my my car is in the garage and <laughs> I am not sat. You, I bet you're the type of person. Oh, you sit with the car going, what's I'll that? What's that? Yeah, I'll be talking to him. Oh, where would I get one of them for wanted one? Yeah. Thanks <laughs> like, for knowledge, isn't it? Well, when like, you get to my age, it's all you've got to need. Delegate, to delegate me. You don't need to. Like, I mean, this is why we married the people we did. You married a a teacher, yeah. um, I married a nanny, and mm -hmm. we find being a parent a piece mm -hmm. of cake. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't still, but... But it is, yeah. it is, it's yeah. like, ah, it's not too bad, is it? Yeah. It's a piece of cake, this. It's yeah. because we've sought a professional. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're probably right there, to be honest, but it's like, it doesn't make me any less tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way of looking at so, it. So, right, so going back onto that on track, so you've got all these documents and stuff yeah. in-house to teach your staff how to do things right away and stuff, right? But then we've yeah. all, you've also got a bank of documents that are there on the website um, or or you've got them ready to email yeah. to break it down to the customers. Yeah. So is, first of all, do, do you think they work? Do you think, do you think they, they do exactly what they're meant to do? Is there anything that you would? <laughs> I think I think they're just never finished. Um, and and, the, and again, uh, my and Baz's relationship, we're anything but married um, mm. at the moment. Yeah. We've just signed our life away, but that's a story mm. for another day. Mm. Um, but the the website cost in the tune of fifteen grand mm. to build. I'm just giving you the facts here, um, and then it costs around about two thousand a month to continue um, doing what we need to do mm. on it. Um, so at some point we got to pull the plug on that and say, look, we can't do that, but we need a template, 
um, and that's where you've stepped in to mm. over that as well because having an A to Z on the website that doesn't ever get updated or yeah. amended is pointless because then I'm putting out information that's what I don't have to check it every day no but it needs to be relevant it needs it? to be it relevant needs. it needs to change and each week I task myself in my diary to do a new myth buster a new A to Z a new FAQ mm -hmm. and that's a challenge mm. because I've got to kind of go and think of things that I know the answer to. What we've started to do is, and with the TikTok, we've started to look at the actual day and go, guys, what was your win? What was the, mm. what, what did you all come today? <sighs> Had a nightmare with this pay slip. Turns out they were paying 13 times a year, not 12. So mm. we thought that's a win that can be told in a five to 10 minute conversation yeah. on the podcast. So we need to be then putting that into an FAQ of how I, I get paid for weekly. Mm. Will the lender assess that as will they need for will they need twelve weeks pay slips? Yeah. Twelve <clears throat> week or, or do they need three yeah. full months? Yeah, exactly. You know, so yeah. kind of we need to be saying, well actually there's not much difference in what the lender would do is ask for the last three months pay slips, mm. even though that doesn't cover a 13 week period that covers 12 yeah over the year you're missing a month mm. but in terms of affordability if the lender gets them three months pay slips and times by 12 mm -hmm. times by four to get the annual then they're going to be doing it wrong yeah yeah because they're going to take three months pay slips presume that they only need to multiply mm -hmm. that by four to get the, mm -hmm. the annual when actually what they need to do 52 exactly mm. yeah good maths there, so it? it wasn't actually because it's three months you divide by three times by 13 right because then you're going to end up point, aren't you? Hmm? Do you know what? Three? Say that again. <laughs> he's like, well, like maths lesson 101. Yeah. So, no. So, if you're paid monthly, you, yeah. you times it by 12. Yeah. So, 12 yeah. months in a year. Paid four weekly, you get paid 13 times in the year. Okay? So, if you oh, think... Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, right, so, right, right. So, you're missing... So, you, you'll get paid every four weeks and you just gain that extra yeah. pay. Yeah. It's not an extra month of pay, but an extra pay. Yeah. So if you've got three monthly pay slips to you, yeah. which to you is your four weekly pay slips, so four week, four week, four week, mm -hmm. so you've got a 12 week period, what a lender, and you've just done what a lender mm -hmm. can do, just because they're so used to the 12 mm -hmm. months, yeah. they will take them pay slips, let's mm -hmm. say they pay two grand a month each, or two grand every four weeks, mm -hmm. they'll just multiply that by four, presuming they're gonna get an annual. They've got three months times by four, mm -hmm. gives them 12. Actually, what they're doing is missing a yeah. four weekly period yeah. so the yeah. underwriter has to then go back a step take those 12 weekly pay slips or 12 months 12 weeks worth of pay slips divide it by that figure mm -hmm. so if they've got three mm -hmm. divide it by that and then times it by the relevant number of times they're going to get paid which would be 13 in that instance but this is this is a win that we had so when a customer comes back and they say oh our mortgage is being declined mm the lender's not giving us the amount we need. Well, we know the affordability works because yeah. we've looked at it. You paid every, say, four weeks. Mm -hmm. We then go to the underwriter. Well, how have you come to that? We'll talk to them about what they've worked their income out, what we have. Um, brilliant this time of year because March is pay slip. We'll mm. have had the year to date on. Mm. Um, but it does catch you out. I didn't know that I, that was even a thing. Mm. I, th I thought you paid monthly and it was like well if you paid weekly obviously it's easy 50 times 50 times. yeah that's what I meant yeah that's um, what I was thinking you meant but if you if you paid monthly you paid monthly if you paid four weekly and a lot of people are paying mm -hmm. for four weekly um, I didn't know I, that I didn't I know could, that I could it. be wrong here but I'm sure the police are right so that kind of so that means pension, that you... military pensions paid four weekly a child benefit is paid four weekly yeah. um, so you actually get child ah, yeah. benefit 13 yeah. times a year. Yeah, you're right. And it, and it comes out at different times. It moves forward in the month, obviously. Yeah. Doesn't it? And then, right, okay. So, so, right, okay. so already... It's tough, that, though, isn't it? So, so to, you, out, to right? you, that's complex. To an underwriter who's mm. dealing with a million cases, then suddenly one jumps in it and it's mm. paid four weekly. Um, then that, that can be... It's, it's an almost go-to. When, yeah. when the affordability comes back and an underwriter says they can't borrow because the income is not as high as you expected, instantly you, think you do the math. You times it by... Yeah, you think it could be that, mm. um, and and that's quite common. Um, or so you've just explained that to me in the same way I explained what I did on the app to fix the app earlier. Yeah, which is something that next time that problem happens, <laughs> I'll remember it. But mine was boring, and yours we have to do podcasts about. We do, we do, right? <laughs> we do. So but it's the same thing, isn't it? It's like your I'll remember in the future to do that with the app. So yeah. then, 
I do it's not complicated at your end. You just say this isn't working, mm. I fix it. For you, it's the same thing. Comes back from the underwriter saying that you think, oh well, this is a red flag, it probably is this, you check it, it's that. Yeah. So it's it's your take and the pain out of it for everyone else. Yeah, and and if you go direct then then you're not gonna have that knowledge and experience to be oh. able to say can I question why you've come up with that figure? Yeah. Same with um, childcare. So if you pay 200 quid a, a week or month childcare, then we know that that is really going to be for 38 weeks of the year, not 52, because you're going to have the summer holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that doesn't mean it's going to be that, because you might pay childcare over. What well, I'm, I'm more talking about after school clubs yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So we know when the, when the benefit is payable and when it's going to be um, how it should be calculated. Do you, on like an off note, do you, do you get many people that it is that tight that as in like to get that mortgage and to get that figure, oh, yeah. <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, that they have to, that extra six weeks or whatever of childcare would have to come into the equation. Yeah. Um, and or would you not, would you not kind of think then what all it takes is one thing to change they go out for a meal that week and it, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. So you talk in council tax, that is creeping up and mm-hmm. do you know when you fill in a form? Um, and you default to like a, a figure. Mm-hmm. So we've got to fill in uh, what's called like a income and expenditure form for the customer. I mean, for shopping, for clothing, mm-hmm. we've got to work out looking at their bank statements and we bear in mind we've got three months worth. So mm-hmm. we've got a good stretch, like how much they spend on food, clothing, stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I mean, you've got twins, that birthday month mm-hmm. will be expensive. Yeah, but if I presume that that's you for the rest of the year, then mm-hmm. I'm going to be mistaken. But then again, it might you might be sensible and, and spend it over three months, but then never again for the next nine because mm. you've built up to it. So we look at things like council tax, which is paid every. Um, you get a, obviously you get mm. a breather, don't you? You pay ten. Yeah, t- ten, ten instead of twelve. Yeah. But it's gone up so much that mm, when the lenders have adjusted their calculators, if we're not adapting to that and we're just putting, so for example, when we put in cost of living and we're filling out the form, if we haven't got a lot to go on, but we presume they do need to have cleaning products and mm-hmm. and uh, shopping for the house, mm-hmm. you can work on per adult, 200 mm-hmm. quid, um, per child, 100 quid. Mm-hmm. And, and then you can also, for building and contents cover, you might put 30 quid in the box. For, for council tax, it used to just be a default 120. Mm-hmm. 120 is half of what I'm in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's just like one of these, what they call it is the kind of, um, they the go with the ONS data and they pull off the average Right. But the average, for a mortgage, the average is different. So we haven't got the single living to worry mm-hmm. about. So we actually need to know what that is. But that extra £100 a month, yeah, that can make mm-hmm. a difference right. to the lend. And, and we're talking it can make a difference between yes or no. So when we've got a customer that's being short-changed for their income because of that four-week yeah. period, that could have eliminated mm-hmm. that. The good news is, by for all that sounds complicated and might put you off, God, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But no. this is where, in the first meeting, we take everything from you and we work with you to build a budget. So we actually wouldn't even be putting you in a position where you're looking at a property that is going to be on no. the on the knife edge. Um, do, they, do you do it like, if it comes back, can they then counteract it and kind of say, actually, the reason for this is this? Do, do you know, like, oh, the... The reason it looks bad on these last three months is we firefight it, yeah. We call it firefighting. Yeah, yeah. And does that and and that the underwriter accepts that as well? Not always. I've lost a battle this week for the first time in ten years about something that I've won a battle for every week for the mm. last ten years. Um just because times have changed and times the underwriters have been a bit stricter. Right. Um and they didn't agree with my reasoning. Um I've put it to a new lender and it's gone through. Mm. But still, like that 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 income that I was trying to firefight with the underwriter to say this is guaranteed, um, albeit not regular. Mm. Um, what it was was called, you get longer separation allowance in the military for being out of your bed. Right. Um, and it was on two of three pay slips, and I wanted them to take it like they always have done in the past. Take it every month as an average. So when it was zero in one month. And it was a let's say a hundred and mm-hmm. hundred in the next. Mm-hmm. I was wanting them to take that as an average over the three months, as okay. opposed to just ignoring the fact that it had one blip. So I was being sensible. So instead, so in effect, a third. So like yes. you say, 60, 66 yeah. quid rather than uh, absolutely, right? yeah. So I was saying take it as an average of sixty six instead of a hundred because there's one without it. 
They then said, right, okay, for the six months pay slips, mm -hmm. we should did. And again, two of the six didn't have anything on, but the other three did. Um, so the other four did. So it, my average was still there, but because it wasn't on every pay slip, they mm -hmm. wouldn't take it. They've never done that. So I think. What so they, they totally discounted the two. Totally that... discounted it. Right. Yeah. And it's a lender that's very forces friendly, but the underwriter wasn't happy with it. And what do they see that as? Is it a bonus or a, a one off payment? Well, this is it. I mean, they see it as something that might not continue. And right. they're damn right. Like, I mean, I get it in the industry that we're in where you're talking about commissions. Hmm. Um, I, I get it when maybe you're talking about overtime for the real network yeah. where they're stopping that. Um, because there's a reason behind it, but this was military. They're going to spend more time out of bed, sadly, because mm. we've got a, we've got we've got things going on, and I could prove for two years that he'd received um, in excess of kind of twenty percent of his wage with that income mm. every year. But yet that wasn't enough, and, and they weren't happy to take it. And so, what is that for the for your customer? What have they missed out on then? Have they oh, missed, they've had, out, on missed on that. Really? particular product I mean and was it much better than what they've got because of the way things are at the moment and this is depending on when you listen to this podcast obviously that'll that'll change um, the accuracy of what I'm saying but here in the end of April mm. 23 rates at the moment are kind of like they're always moving and when I say that they're not necessarily coming down or going up lenders are taking turns to be at the top of the charts mm. so if it's Halifax at the top with the best rate today after a couple of weeks they're going to Fill up their quarter, inundated with applications. Then it's in that way. So is that a little bit like putting a special offer on? So you you have a cheaper rate, you get the customers in. Yeah. So you get more customers in at less of a rate in effect. But then when you think you've got enough of that, you you, you put your you rates put up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's just like everything. It's kind of supply and demand, and mm. it works really well. But luckily for the customer, what that meant was we applied for a rate with a lender. I'll not name the lender. Um, because I think it could have mm. just been a one-off, hopefully, because a lot of the military have that type of income. Mm. And boy, do they need a perk, you know? Like, mm. why shouldn't they get an additional income for being out yeah. of bed? Mm. But when it comes to um, a lender having the best rate, yes, they lost out on that rate. Luckily, when we've got it resourced a couple of weeks down the line, the lender that has said no, mm -hmm. their rate now has dropped off a bit, but someone's taken their place at the top. Right. So we've just moved to the right with a similar rate mm -hmm. with a lender that's going to take it. So to the customer, they've not noticed anything, really. The, the, they've had the disappointment. We'll always tell them. Uh, we'll always put the confidence in them that we have a solution. When we get, I mean, no one wants bad news at five o'clock on a Friday. Um, so we'll work later and we'll make sure that they've got a solution that we're going to be So, So but the end, the good end news, result good news, is... Bad news, good news yeah. type scenario. Nothing, they've not really missed out by much, have they? T time... Uh, certainly mm. stress loss of sleep mm. um, disappointment for us admin we don't charge them yeah. more yeah. because we have to do this it's our job so is it not a big knock on effect then really I'm trying to downplay it but it is a big it, but this is the, this is the whole the gist of the, co uh, the, the podcast is that was about 10 hours of our work going back and forth appealing this mm. pointing it out putting put a brilliant case study together mm. to say look here's my evidence links to the government website which explained the mm -hmm. allowance that they were receiving why they were links to things like the news stories the military pay increase mm -hmm. next year or this year all things that would add comfort to mm -hmm. yes that you take an additional income which you're right could not be guaranteed if we never go to war again and we mm -hmm. never need their exercise we never need to train they'll never get paid that but that's not going to happen in the military yeah. is it so i was giving them other reasons why actually not only was that reason there's other things you take as well. other things but it was just a knockback. And that's, it's rare that it happens, but it's, it's a sign so of the times. all that, if that was for an everyday fellow off the street that's come in, he decides not to go with you after all that. That's 10 hours you've lost. Mm. But, but as it's a military one, you're not charging them anyway for this. No, it's not. So, you, so all, we, we that's 10 hours that you've lost every, Everything we do is on, is on us until we get the, the, get the, the case. Yeah, but you've lost, you've lost 10 hours on one customer. Mm. How many customers do you think you've got, roughly? Well, every case is about 10 hours work, um, whether it's good or bad, mm. because by then, you can only do so much, but by then it is 10 hours because you've done the work, you've mm. done the compliance, you've done the research, you've done the conversations, you've done the explaining. The good news is it was very easy to switch because we know the customer inside out. Yeah. It Then the, the repeated work doesn't need to be 
done because I've done it all. So the 10 cool. hours, we can but, slap it back into yeah. the blender yeah. and, it, and luckily it will fly through. But um, it's still a lot of, still a lot of work. But this it. is why, I suppose that's why in the first instance that I kind of don't just roll over and go, okay, mm. Mr. Bank, I'm not going to, yeah. I'm not going to repeal that. We look into it and we fight the corner. It's just rare when we have a positive case. So the thing is, that, we would why never, did you fight the corner then? Because you could have just done what you did in the end. Because as the, the way I always view it is, would I lend the customer <coughs> because my own money? If I was lending mm. it, and, and the answer was yes, I know about their income inside out. Mm. I passionately know that they will receive that income forever. Mm. Sadly, they probably sometimes mm. don't want to, but they'll be out of bed mm. over Christmas periods, New Year's, birthdays, mm. births of the children. Mm. So for all it, it might be just six, seven quid a day, this allowance, why isn't it taken? Mm. Of course, it's not going to be taken 12 months a year, but roughly three months to six months of the year, they will be out of bed, whether that's on deployment or just training, mm. you know, working a weekend. So why have you gone out of your way there then to give yourself more work, more time, you know, your staff? I wouldn't do it if I didn't think the, the, I was no, right and the underwriter wasn't why, agreed. Why did, is this a personal thing of you wanting to no, just no. like a like a victory kind of thing? It's or, actually something So why didn't you do it just go straight to the other lender that you've gone to? Because that's the easy way out. And it's, that's not always are you going to get a better outcome for the customer with that. Right. So it might be a higher interest rate. And are you, all, are you also looking like longer term as in you want the underwriter to understand it so the next time they don't do the same thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that yeah, yeah. I mean, thing, I mean we, it... we can bring in the, the in this case, we actually did go to seniors and, mm. and say, look, this isn't right. But they stood by it. And again, we don't know if that's signs of the times that they've looked into something in more mm. detail. If they communicated well enough to us, I'd take it on the chin and I move over. With this, I, I believe I'm still right. But at some point, you have to think resourceful and for the customer. Mm. I could fight it for another 10 days and not yeah. be successful. So therefore, we're going to move to the Next best and you're in no man's land, aren't they, for that ten days? Exactly. Where so, like for the, for the customer, I mean, it, it, it is it, it is disappointing, but we've been transparent about it. Um, they understand it. Um, it's just sad because it happens in the the nursing profession a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. with bank banking, um, yeah. working for different hospitals, um, in in jobs where it's always going to be there. When guys have got to pay the mortgage, they're gonna they're gonna do what they can. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's just. An, an element of risk and being responsible but I think in that particular instance it was just taken too far um, it, if, a, if a person is um, let's say a 23 year old mechanic working every Saturday and Sunday uh, single mm -hmm. couple um, no children first house should they be taking every all the overtime that they receive for every weekend that they're working because they're working their, their absolute mm. backsides off when we know they're going to get a house, work to do on the house. Mm. They're going to have a child. They won't be able to work every weekend. Yeah. So should you then be taking it? Mm. Thing is, the military can't just say because I've got children and bought a house that I want to have this weekend off. Yeah. So that was my argument. Yeah. So they're, going, we, they're going to have to do it no matter what. Yeah. They're going to so I had a valid argument. Mm. Whereas some particular industries, I wouldn't have fought that hard. No. But I would certainly have appealed it to the point of demonstrate not being comfortable. And if I thought I had a case, I would do it. And that's what mm. we do as a PGS. We We'll, we'll always have the back and we don't often lose because we do things right and we shouldn't be appealing something that doesn't exist. We don't mm. appeal to something because go and give them a chance. Yeah, They've yeah. had no bonus, but they might get it. We never yeah. do that. This is more about explaining. I mean, we're making it sound complicated because if you're listening, mm. you're thinking, hopefully you're thinking, I couldn't do that on my own yeah. because you haven't got the expertise and the experience mm. to do it. But if you use us, all you'll hear is, I'm, I found a property I'm submitting my mortgage application. Here's my pay slips. We'll do all this behind the scenes. We're not ringing you up for 10 hours worth of mm. holding your hand to say, mm. need now say this. This is yeah. us doing it behind your back so that you don't have to feel that stress. Mm. Hopefully the outcome is positive and you'll get your mortgage offer. But in this instance, we have to let the customer know what we've done. Because if we just say to them, we're going to move up. Why didn't you try? We did. Mm. So, but we do have a plan B. We're going to try, but we've got a plan B. And then when plan B needs to be activated, then hopefully we can make sure that they're not worried because we've given them a problem and a solution at the same time rather mm. than they're not lending you the money, what next? Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. there isn't an op option. You know, sometimes there isn't an option. We're, we're lucky that there is. Would we have dug in deep and no? Because we still wanted them to have the right first time mortgage. Mm. But when it doesn't come off, we have to look at plan B. And if there isn't a plan B, sadly, that's mm. the underwriter saying we can't lend. We've mm -hmm. then got to look at things like going to family to see if there's any further 
help they can give in terms of the deposit because the loan amounts being reduced. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've then got to look at other factors. So is there some commitments that they can get rid of? You know, but then that's not going to show for another three months. Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. So, like things like uh, whether it's car finance, um, mm. credit cards, um, things that were taken into account, like uh, hobbies, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. There is ways to limit the affordability and reduce affordability. Um, well, how do? It's not like saying stop shopping <clears throat> and stop spending so much. Go to little instead of. Hmm. Tesco not like that it's more about looking at right okay you've got a credit card here um, and you're paying £500 a month mm-hmm. off it um, and you're using this much we have to take that as a credit commitment hmm. do you spend that in your bank it's not a credit commitment you're spending your wage right. Right, you know? okay. um, and how a lender would assess it so we'd look at everything also not to get too much detail but say you've got you're buying a house hundred grand, and you've got £15,000 in savings mm-hmm. yeah the lender is going to give you 90 grand, but let's say they said we can only lend you 88,000 mm-hmm. because they've done the affordability and everything's a bit tight. You've got a thousand pound on the credit card, mm-hmm. yeah, and they're taking that into account at 33 pounds a month. So they'll then they reduce your lending because that is playing a part. Mm-hmm. But actually, if we reassess this and say, well, guys, if rather than putting 15,000 pounds as your savings, um, what we'll put is we'll clear that credit card, we'll give 14,000 as savings. You're still using 10 for your deposit. The rest mm-hmm. is for fees and getting mm-hmm. in the property. But your credit card's gone. Mm. You can now have the 90 yeah. rather than having to pull £2,000 extra out of the savings. Mm. So it's yeah. how it works. I mean, again, it, it sound, we're making That's it sound nice, complicated. Yeah. I was going to say that. But well, this is the whole so, point. So the myth, is, it, the myth is it shouldn't be because you're using us. We're doing all this work behind the scenes. So the myth, the myth really should be it isn't to, to us, to the end user. No. Because you're doing the complicated stuff. Yeah, so really? we will take all the complicated. A mortgage mm. shouldn't be complicated, complex, and it certainly shouldn't be full of just small print. Mm. You, we should have translated that small print into the bullet points you needed and explained in depth when that bullet point is more suited to your scenario mm. um, or to your, to, to your wants and needs of, right, okay, actually, that does affect me. Um, so every lender has has warning signs so that might be your home will be reassessed if you do not keep up the payments mm-hmm. bit of an obvious yeah. one um, but then you also have a question where they'll, they'll ask, ask if anything may change in your financial circumstances mm. during the period of the mortgage of course it will yeah. but what they're asking for there is are you suddenly going to go part time are you suddenly going to reduce your hours are you going to yeah. be self-employed most customers won't know that so no. obviously that is being um, it's me Asking the question, um, but you can only be as honest as your knowledge at the yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could get a you could get a promotion the day mm. after, take mm. the job, be useless at that job, mm. and then be out of the job. Mm. You know, so good things can turn bad. And like the last myth we busted, you don't know what's around the corner, what could happen. No. But we've got to go off now. That's all we can go off. Mm. And the good thing is we do live in the moment, and hence why you look at three months bank statements, because them three months bank statements could have been through the worst. Um, I mean, you said you've been to a funeral, mm. um, which happened to be down south. Mm. Like financially, you've got to pull three, four hundred pounds mm. out of your backside to go down south. If I looked at mm. that three month period, I said, "Bad." So do you travel on a train every yeah. month? You know, um, that's expensive. Why do you go down mm. there? Is it, is it for work? You just have to communicate with the customer because you don't know what's going to catch you out. So if someone is on board line of because of that thirty three pound a month credit yeah. card that they can't get the mortgage. You've also got to think about the factors like what could, and this is where the contract covers their backside. So the lender will give you the money and they'll make sure that no matter what, they can get their money mm. back. Yeah, of course, which is the right thing. And we, we just need to turn that into a completely different language, medium, whether that be our YouTube videos, our podcasts, um, our TikToks, um, the FAQs on the website. Mm. And we make sure that we put it in bite sized chunks so that people can break that long winded terms and conditions down to something that's more human, um, that's our job. So we, it shouldn't be complicated. And on the back of every email and the research we send is we look forward to your feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, the start of the email says this is a big deal. Um, it's not something you should be taking lightly. No. And we expect a minimum of 10 questions. We're inviting them to ask 10 questions. No question is stupid. Because if we don't, they mm. feel like they, they'll feel like 
they're proven to us that they're mature and understand it. Yeah. That's the opposite of what they should be feeling. They should be coming arms open. I'm got a clue. Where do we start? Yeah. That's easier for me than someone who wants to pretend that they're mature and that this big mm. purchase they're making. It's like you, you're a very, very bright bad. lad, but you would oh, you, you'd panic about stuff like this. Of course we, I do. We, but we need to say, right, okay, um, we're going to take it away from you. That's not saying, Barry, don't worry about that. No. I'm going to make you buy this house and nothing's good. Because you, mm. you'll still go, but, but, but. Yeah, but. of course. So I need to make sure, what, what are you worried about? Mm. What's, what's on your mind? Inflation, right, okay. What can we do about it? Yeah. So it's 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 a lay in the fear. It's not it's not taking that, that risk out at all. It's just it's explaining the risk and why it's yeah healthy in effect, isn't it? And the you good know? thing is that we'll come under a category of salesman at some mm. point. Um, but the, we're anything but. Like mm. I'm not going to sell you a mortgage and make you take it out because I want to get paid and mm. gain your business. I want to make sure that you always be able to afford that house. Mm. Um, and even on the protection side, because we can protect that through illness and death and yeah, credit yeah. loans um, and loss of your job and things like that. But we're not doing that to sell it. We're doing no. it to make sure you've alleviated your worries. It's peace of mind. You don't come to us and say, I want that house, but I'm not sure I can afford right. it. And at the end of the day, if the worst came to the worst and you were doing that, two years down the line when they up, it allowed you know to remortgage or whatever they're just not they're not going to come back so you're losing a customer you're losing yeah. that every two years or whatever it is that they're tying in for you're losing that you're losing the hope that when they want cover they'll come to you as well so <clears throat> excuse our, me you, our, you need... our appointments for a repeat customer mm. uh, a minimum um of kind of 15 30 minutes mm. um that's the minimum whereas a new customer we give an hour so mm. we'll book out 30 minutes slot for an existing customer for a remortgage because they've they've had it all explained and they've bought into the trust. Yeah. What we can do is just say, right, okay, let's have a let's have a Q and A. What's your worries? What mm. are you thinking? And we'll talk and then we'll get into the nitty gritty because it's about how they feel. So we it never there's there's no magic formula. Someone comes, I'm not sure I can I can think of one customer who is is a brilliant mm. example of this. Um I'm not sure I can afford it. I'm panicking and panicking. I'm mm. not sure I can afford it. Is it me? No. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Right, um, we spell out how it works, and and actually, we can make the new purchase almost yeah. more affordable than the current property they're living in. That's by restructuring their finances. Yeah, yeah. It's by looking at the bigger picture, um, and it's by spelling out where they are, and also looking at the savings that can be made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be renting a garage because they've got a motorbike, mm -hmm. which is eighty pound a month, but they weren't thinking of that as part of the house. Right. And in the new house, they, they've got a garage. They don't mm -hmm. need to. But putting all that into the equation, when it comes back to the two years, that particular customer had had a forty thousand pounds pay increase overall in his family, uh, uh -huh. family income. So like between him and his wife, hmm. forty thousand pounds more, um, and they were worried about the difference between a hundred or the next hundred, thinking is that just going to be too much? But what happened is a pay rise came. Hmm. But with that does come stress, more more cost. Hmm. Um, we we don't know. But actually, when we look at the bank statements, they didn't have the equivalent of forty grand extra sat there. Right. They lived within the means, hadn't they? Yeah. So yeah. that so basically, they buy more expensive. So stuff when things when yeah, they're just like <clears throat> they spend it disposable. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm happy to say that I I would like to spend the money that I have mm. doing things with the kids and having memories. Mm. Um, by this year's holiday because I know mm. we're not going on holiday this year. Um, but thinking, well, actually dying with loads of money in the bank doesn't give the kids anything no. so if you get a 40,000 pay rise I wouldn't expect to see 40,000 mm. extra at the bank thinking oh, well, I didn't want to spend it mm. um, but at the same time if you had a pay reduction because you needed to drop down to four day a week for childcare um, I, I still think you'll survive I think people just mm. would adapt to it because you do you don't go out and go to football matches mm. and, on an all day bender mm. when you're skinned um, of course, there's credit cards and things like that people yeah. can do. That's in that's that's a different it's common sense, sense as well. Yeah. I mean, but like like the funeral again, not to go back for it, um, <clears> back <throat> on it. But so a funeral card, that's what credit cards for. Mm. Like you weren't expecting it. No. The cars in the garage, I've had to pay on the credit card, mm. but I can afford it when payday hits. I'll yeah. pay it off. Um, but actually, if you pull it out of your bank and that leaves you no money for the fridge, then mm. you know these things I catch up going out on a bender because you. You may it's and you spend hundred quid on a credit mm. card because you know you're going to get paid next week. That's not ideal. It's a slippery slope. Mm. 
Um, the difference between, well, actually, I'm in the army and next month I'm on deployment. Yeah, you know, you're why getting, wouldn't yeah. you put on a credit yeah. card and go and enjoy yourself? Mm. Because it's going to be paid off mm. because you're not going to spend any income next month. No. Why would you not have that one last two or mm. um, So to me, it's kind of like, we're going to make it uncomplicated by challenging you to talk about the situation and then you're in your own head are going to give yourself that therapy which says this isn't as bad. Yeah. Because I think the complicated part, part is really communication well. though. It all comes back to you finding the information out and then analysing the information for for the person and better than... So you, you'd be able to analyse my bank accounts or my trends or whatever better than I could. Better than I could on your own. Yeah. Like... Because I can preach to people, and then with my own, you, you can think actually it's all going to be okay. Yeah. But then I can also slip into the same way you would, yeah. and be thinking, God, when when's it like? How are we yeah. going to cope? Christmas is now, phew, crazy, but six seven months yeah. down the line, Christmas starts when you start spending money. Which yeah. if you've got four kids, yeah. should start now. <laughs> <months before. Yeah. laughs> um, starts. So it's a never-ending cycle. I mean, yeah, I, I've I've stopped spending money on the office, uh, yeah. stopped spending money on the car, stopped spending money in the house, um, but then there's always a bill. Mm. Uh, there's always something that crops up. That's, that's that's where you can't mm. um, you can't you can't avoid it. And if you've got massive amounts of disposable income, you should be on holiday. Mm. And it'll be typical you'll spend that money on holiday, and then you'll come back and your garden fence is blowing, mm. and you've got that money to spend. See, I'm I'm proper risk averse, so I've. I would have money in an account, and I'd rather I, I'd I'd rather have that there just in case something happens. Mm-hmm. And I am very much that way that I. But, but that's I, fine. But that's it's a rubbish way to be though, isn't it? Cause no, like, it's fine. Where you think oh, I could be doing that. And it's fine, but as long as you're not like me. So the reason we've not had a family holiday this year, um, and I'm talking like you know what one of them three four grand holidays mm-hmm. where you go abroad, and that, it's because we had four in the space of twelve months last year. That was extreme mm. because of COVID and we were trying to catch up for all the, the kids' ages mm. where I, I wanted to yeah. go on holiday. Whereas this year we said we'll just go more local. The cost of living is hitting everyone. I'm running the business. Mm. And it's kind of saying we've we've all had to pull our belts in in the business. Mm. We've seen the guys who get like bonus and commission for within this industry, their incomes drop. Mm. So then me taking more income out of the business to go on holiday yeah. it just doesn't make sense. Mm. Um, and also like... You want to go on holiday stress free, and if you've got, mm. um, if you feel any kind of guilt, you've got two hundred customers yeah. plus that are all worrying about it, yeah. and you're not there. Then to me, it's just one of those decisions. It doesn't mean by the end of the year I might change my mind, but yeah, you will. But in your position, if you had that money to go and mm. you didn't have those worries, then why wouldn't you spend that money? Mm. Because you know what, you'll get hit by a bus walking to the bank to put that mm. money in a savings account. The yeah. reason I've not had a four grand holder this year is because I've got four kids. Yeah, that's why. Ones wanting an update on them. 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 Ones Wanting an update on them, one wants wanting an update on them, one wants an update on them, one wants wanting 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 an update on them. She will not feel comfortable with your explanation. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, she doesn't fit. Yeah, of she course. Won't, she won't believe a word that comes So, what we do is because we deal with a lot of people who might be in that predicament mm-hmm. of uh, one party's away, um, we ask them to create a WhatsApp group. Okay? Right. So, it'll be called. I don't know, um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith mm. purchasing whatever house. Yeah. And it's with me, the advisor. They will take my research, go away, and mm. then we'll come back with their questions. The questions will hit the WhatsApp group, mm. and I'll come back with a voice clip, which we all love. Mm. That voice clip then can be listened to 
and mm. you can explain the advice or question in clearest form instead of me trying to make yeah, like, yeah. my writing stuff. Both parties can listen to it in their own time and come back with questions to the same subject. Mm. Whereas Chinese whispering, yeah, Baz, yeah. can you check with Paddy what yeah. was the answer to that question? Your explanation might mm. just be a default generic tone mm. where actually what it was more about how I explained mm. it than just what was the answer? Don't worry about it. Mm. But if I've said don't worry yeah. about it, it'll be absolutely fine. We've had this before. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So I yeah, think, no, that, I think that's, that's where we yeah, where we unique. Exactly. And if brokers use that, even to individuals, and we mm. do, to answer a question rather than put in an email what will happen when the fixed rate ends mm. is do not worry about it. What will happen is six months before, I'm going to give you a nudge. We're going to mm-hmm. touch base with you, make sure you haven't emigrated or won the lottery. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to just give you a nudge to say that your mortgage is coming up in six months' time. That's plenty of time to plan. Mm. Let's then book in a chat and let's see where we are. Yeah. Um, that's the answer. We don't need to go into, well, actually, what we'll do, depend on the rates and where the mm. interest rate we'll look is. We'll look at this and this. We, which is a copy and paste. So we send the document, but we'll also try and answer it. I can't book in a follow-up appointment with every single customer every single night. So no. having that WhatsApp medium to be able to come so back So you must have like thousands of WhatsApp groups on there then. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, right. And sometimes it's quite hard to um, to pinpoint where you're up to. But mm. by listening to going back over it, mm. dead easy. So yeah, actually listening yeah. to my... Mm. When I read an email and I've responded to someone, I think I've said that a million times. Mm. Whereas it's the voice and it's the tone and it's the... Mm. It's the little mentions that I wouldn't put in an email because I can't be bothered to write out mm. everyone's so you know, name. Yeah. Like you mentioned to the kids, so like, yeah, so you've got four kids. I know what you're saying there about that particular property, but actually, if we think of a two-year fixed versus a five-year fixed, the reason I'm recommending a two is it gives you a chance to reconsider in two mm-hmm. years, whereas five years is a long time for your kids and mm. their ages if you don't like the schools. Yeah. So that your big kid goes to the school, you don't like it, your nearest school is 30 miles away, mm. Do you know what I mean? Then it's a, a the consideration area. factor. So like me saying that with empathy in my voice mm. as opposed to in Just a letter in there. Yeah. doesn't make sense. So that's no, how good. I would and say it, we make it uncomplicated, less complex because they'll always be complex. Mm. Um, but the small print, we should be reading it and dictating it back yeah. to you. And it comes back to the whole technology thing of how, that, how much of a benefit it is, mm. really. And yeah. when you think of it like that and how you're embracing that rather than thinking of it like if you'd have said to me before we'd started doing a lot of these podcasts and, and before you'd explained it, I'd have thought like, well, WhatsApp's more of like something you do with your mates. It's not, yeah. it's not something that yeah. you, a business would usually do. Yeah, but you yeah. advertise it on all, all of your advertising that it is drop me a WhatsApp. Yeah, it's which great. is like, to me, I, I, I still, it's a, you know what, I find it hard to get made around. They use it in the military. It's brilliant. It's, oh, very, it's, it's brilliant. encrypted. So the card, yeah. no one can intercept it. Yeah. So it's probably just as safe as a, an email. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. It's just more, it's a bit more, I think it's not even stigma. It's it's the reputation. It, it's a thing that you do with your mates. But what I don't but like I is when, great, when, it's... when you ring your bank um, and they say, hi, just before discussing this, I'm just going to put this automated message on, mm. which explains that they're registered and regulated by the financial mm. product. You, you go, what? Yeah. We have to do that at mm. every single appointment. What we do is we send out the document in an email format beforehand. Mm-hmm. We break it down into bullet points for each document. This document does this. This mm. document does that. That does. The customer still won't read that. Mm. But when we have the chat, we'll go through the bullet points. We'll ask yeah. them questions about it. We're worried about the ones that aren't reading it. We're not bothered about them reading the small print to protect our backside. Mm. We're, we're reading the, the small print to make our lives easier and for it to be less complicated. So yeah. what we're doing is we're giving them a 20-page document we know they're not going to read, but we're explaining it verbally. Hmm. in a shorter hand someone's wanting an update and then make sure that they understand then it prompts questions then it invites a conversation which by the end of it you've you've talked more than those thousand words in the document yeah. anyway and but again it's, it it's taken that helps you take the complication out doesn't it that's the end so brilliant so that that's uh that's the <clears throat> myth that we've busted hmm. um that mortgages are complicated complex and full of small print um they can be, but if you use the right mortgage advisor, you really should never have any of those three um, still mm. in your mind or still in your of your. It's opinion all about by being, the end of it. It's all about having the understanding yourself and being able to. So, like you say, if if Ellen has said to me where we've to with the mortgage, I should be able to tell her in layman's terms, obviously, mm. where I'm up to. Yeah, and if the, and if it doesn't quite come across from an email or mm. that, use other mediums. 
Mm. And sometimes, you know what, face to face is that medium. Mm. You can't can't beat a bit of face to face. I had one yesterday, and it was so nice to see how excited. If anything, it probably made me want to put them more to the top of the queue mm. for the process because we have we're very busy at the moment. Let's say five or six agreement and principles, which is uh, can I get a mortgage, yes or no, mm. um, today. Um, when I'd finished it, I really wanted to get them that before the weekend. Mm. Not that it would be any different on the phone. I always want to get it as quickly yeah, as possible, yeah. but you can't bump one person down. Yeah. But yeah. when I saw how excited they were to go and see that property on Tuesday, it's a bank holiday weekend. If we don't get mm. it done a day, when they see that property on Tuesday, they're less equipped to get the offering mm. because they haven't got what they need. And just to see how excited they were, because they showed me on the phone, I was swiping through the pictures of the property, and you just lose that contact over the phone. Mm. It was just so nice to have, because I was like, you know what, you really want that. Whereas mm. if they're on the phone, they say, I really like yeah, this property. We can't see their their smile yeah. boom out. I mean, even in, in Zoom, yeah, of course, but mm. like Zoom Zoom appointments. But as well, you haven't got enough hours in the day, have you? No. To do that to no. it all the time, have you? No, but yeah, interesting. Mm. Very so good. Um, we'll cut this one short. Um, yeah. We will leave it there. Um, look forward to next episode, mm-hmm. episode 10. We don't know what the myth is. Um, we should have a jingle. <laughs> That's the aim, um, isn't it, Baz? I'll try my best, yes. <laughs> right, always good. Yeah, uh, drop, us, drop us a comment, drop mm-hmm. us some feedback. Um, hit the like on whatever platform you're listening to. Hit the follow. Um, and if you think there's somebody out there that's putting off a mortgage because of any of the myths we bust, throw them our way in terms of let them listen because we're hoping to bust all, bust all those myths because that's what they are. It's shouldn't be the case that people aren't educated. We do it within the military. We're spreading that onto the services, the police, fire brigade and the NHS. But for everybody who's looking at getting a mortgage, especially those first-time buyers... Google just isn't enough. So have a listen to our myth busting, especially if that topic, and hopefully after episode 100, each topic is covered, you might find some respite and it might just spur you on Mm. to pick up the phone, get in touch with your bank or a mortgage broker um, because that's the only way forward. Let them do the hard work for you. Yeah, sounds good. All right. All right, thank you.